most famous for. But before we get to that, let's bring everybody up to date. What was, what was happening? Give us a capsule view of your life up until your casting in Enter the Dragon. Oh, uh, short. That could be long. We've got an hour. We've got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we can talk just read my book when it comes out next month. Well, yeah. but, uh, no, preview, I'm, I'm preview. Kidding. Just kidding, just kidding. Um, I was born in uh, Mil uh, Paris, Kentucky. Not Paris, France. Paris, Kentucky. Very small town. Population 600 people. Wow. And uh, they didn't even have a hospital in my real hometown. My hometown was Millersburg, Kentucky, and that was seven miles outside of Paris. But my mother had to go to Paris to have me, so mm -hmm. they didn't have a hospital there. We only had about two stoplights in the city, and a uh, very small town. And um, I uh, moved to uh, San Diego when I was in the third grade. And then I moved back to S Kentucky for fourth grade. And then I hmm. went back to San Diego for, a ju for an elementary school and junior high school. Went to high school in Kentucky. Played football, University of Louisville. Uh, uh, brothers, sisters? No brothers and sisters. Oh, uh, you're only child? Only child. Oh, yeah. I chose University of Louisville out of, uh, out of several other schools. Uh, so I decided to go to University of Louisville, play football. And then. Mm -hmm. um, I played football there my freshman year, and I was getting ready to transfer to a different school. I didn't like Louisville. And I, but in between, I got involved with martial arts. Mm -hmm. uh, martial arts school opened up in my hometown. At the time, it was Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, they opened up a martial arts school, and I had always wanted to study martial arts. I used to read the books and stuff, but then hmm. I had the opportunity to study, and also it was good conditioning, yeah. so I, I took the classes there just to stay in shape and also to learn some self-defense, some real self-defense. Hmm. So uh, um, that's when I got involved with martial arts. Uh, well, I'm curious. I mean, most people I've talked to, Michael Jai White and all the other guys, they always attribute it to Bruce Lee, of course, and Enter the Dragon. But you didn't have Bruce Lee or Enter the Dragon no. to be inspired by. What, what led you to be interested in martial arts? Uh, well, like I said, I... Uh, Two reasons, basically. I mean, you know, I, I read books on martial arts, you know, but I never thought I'd have the opportunity to train in martial arts. I used to re read these books. And then Did I'll you stumble across them? I mean, how do you uh, find these books? Well, uh, at the library. Library, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So, who uh, knew? So uh, then uh, the school opened up, and then I said, OK, uh, let me go check this out. It was Okinawa Shurinlu style. And um, I started studying that. and for self-defense and for uh, conditioning. Mm -hmm. More conditioning maybe than self-defense, maybe. But because I was going to continue playing football, play football, I was going to transfer to another school. But I got hooked on martial arts hmm. and, and I, I was just hooked on it. I continued with it from that point on. Mm -hmm. 1971, I won the International Middleweight Karate Championships. Um, I won a bunch of other tournaments. I only fought in black belt division about mm, a little less than two years. And the reason that is because I got an opportunity to get in the movie business. Um, so I, I took that because I did an article in um, one of the magazines. Well, it was only two at that time. Yeah. It was, uh, There's even less now. Black Belt Jones. I mean, Black, <laughs> Black Belt <laughs> Jones Black magazine. Belt, uh, Black Belt <laughs> magazine. And um, uh, Karate Illustrated. Right. Those were the two main karate magazines at that time. So Karate Illustrated did an article on me, and I told them that. On the cover, I said, uh, get, uh, a trophy won't put gas in my car. Yep. That's all we were getting, trophies. Yep. You know? Oh, I know. You know, yeah. I, I love the competition. I, I love competition, but I couldn't pay the rent on those trophies and put gas in my car. So uh, that's why I quit, uh, because I had an opportunity to get in the movie business. Well, let's talk about that, because I've, I've heard it from mm -hmm. the very first movie was, of course, Enter the Dragon, correct? Nope. No. Here we go. <laughs> Scoop. Most people don't know. No, I, even me. They don't know. Go ahead. My first film was uh, Melinda. Melinda, of Ma course. Melinda, 1972 I, with yep. Calvin Lockhart. It was my very first film, mm -hmm. and that was a freak accident. Um, <clears throat> I uh, basically was teaching at my karate school. I wasn't quite ready to get in the movie business yet. I wanted to go to acting school and, and uh, study acting before I pursued that, because my... My super goal, once I got into martial arts, my super goal, once I decided I wasn't going to go on and play professional football, 
I said, uh, my super goal was to become an actor. Mm -hmm. And, um, but before that, I wanted to win the world championship, the international karate championships, because I could use that maybe get in the movie business. So in 1971, uh, August 1971, I won the uh, International Middleweight Karate Championship. And then I still wasn't ready to get in the movie business. I wanted to open up a karate school, get some money coming in, and then go study acting. But when I opened my karate school up, I was teaching someone who had a, a very popular teen magazine. Hmm. And she knew uh, some director, a director who was, du who was going to direct a film out at MGM. And and he knew that she could find anything that he wanted for a movie. So he said, I know you can't find me this, but I need somebody to teach the star of my film karate. She said, oh, that's a piece of cake. My karate instructor can do that, Jim Kelly. So I went to Warner Brothers, I'm not Warner Brothers, MGM, M MGM yeah. and uh, talked to the producer, the director, and they said, do you know karate? I said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. They, so I did a few moves. And um, they said, well, okay after talking to him for about 30 minutes, they said, come back tomorrow, we want to talk to you again. So I go back the next day, and they say, look, we decided to do one thing with you. We want you to teach the star karate. We want to offer you a co-star and role in the movie. Mm -hmm. So just like that, it happened. Just like that. And I wasn't ready for that, because <laughs> I hadn't even studied I didn't know anything about acting. Not one thing, didn't know what a camera, a real camera looked like. So they said, don't worry, we know you haven't studied, haven't studied acting, but the director will work with you. He'll work you through it. Hmm. So that's the way it happened. And uh, I got that part and as a co-star, a really good part, and a lot of dialogue. And um, I did that, and the actors on the set were saying, Jim, you're over now. I said, what do you mean I'm <laughs> over now? You know, I was very naive. So they said, you're over. You're going to get all kinds of parts now. And I said, OK. So I went back to my karate studio teaching karate. My telephone wasn't ringing off the hook. so. Uh, Finally, my agent called me about three months later and said, Jim, go out to Warner Brothers. They're, they're casting a fight film out there called, uh, I think it was, at that time it was called Iron Fist, something like that. Uh, steel and Iron, Iron hmm. Steel or something like that. Yeah. But you won't get the part, she said. You won't get the part, but I want you to go out there and talk to the producers and directors because uh, they're going to sign the guy they really want for this part. But at least you get a chance to meet these guys. And because uh, they will be doing more movies. I said, okay, I'll go out there and meet them. I went out to Warner Brothers, met Fred Weintraub and Paul Heller, and um, they said, here's a script, check it out. So I read, this, I read part, of the, part of the script, a couple of pages, whatever. And um, they said, what do you think? What do you think? I said, hmm, looks very interesting, I like it. They said, do you know Bruce Lee? I said, no, I don't know him personally. I tried to catch up with him when I first came to LA because I wanted to train with him. And, but he was gone. He had a school down in Chinatown, but uh, he left and went to Hong Kong. So uh, they said, well, anyway, uh, you like the part? I said, yeah, it's very interesting. They said, you got it. <laughs> That's the way it happened, man, just like that. Yeah, because I got it from Fred Weintraub. Because yeah. they did cast Rockney Tarantino. That's right. And then supposedly the night before they were going to go over the, the, the film crew to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. Rockney apparently, according to Fred, said that you're taking advantage of me. Mm -hmm. And Fred, as he put it, disagreed. Mm -hmm. And at that point, they already knew about you. Mm -hmm. And then just, there you go. Yeah, my agent said, you won't get the part. Just go on out there and meet those guys. Yeah, because Rockney <laughs> at that time was cast. Yeah. But I mean, how, how soon between the time they told you you had the part and you, did you start doing the part? Well, they asked me, said, they said, uh, how soon can you leave for Hong Kong? I said, I can leave tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I can leave tomorrow. They said, do you have a passport? I said, nope, said, don't worry about it. So I, I left probably about two, two weeks later. Two, two weeks, weeks later? Yeah, yeah, and I was only supposed to be in Hong Kong for like four, four weeks, I mean, four weeks, four to five weeks mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. I was there three months making that movie. <laughs> three months. It was the slowest movie. It was very slow. Well, yeah. now let's get into detail because this is this is the this is the iconic film. Yeah. This is the movie that opened up kung fu to the world. Mm -hmm. It actually was the first uh, modern day kung fu movie ever done in in, in Hong Kong. Uh, so, um, and here you are, a African American 
in Hong Kong of 1972, right? 73. 73. I think it came out in 73. I wasn't sure yeah. if they made it there. Yeah, we, I think we started shooting in January 73. I 73, think. all right. I think so. So what was your experience? Tell, give, us, give us the details. Uh, very interesting. Yeah. Actually, that was my first time out of, out of, uh, the, out of the States. I'm, my first time going to uh, traveling out of the States. And it was a very interesting experience. The first week was good. Second week was good. <laughs> <laughs> but then, and Hong Kong com was completely different than it is today. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, we were on, I was staying on Kowloon side. There's Kowloon side, there's Hong Kong side. Kowloon side is a very busy, busy side. I yeah. Mean, very busy. Lots that's so the one that's people. attached to the mainland. Hong Kong is an island separate from exactly. that. Exactly. Right. So Kowloon is where most of the, um, uh, the, the uh, studios were. Yes. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, after about two weeks, man, I was starting to get homesick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so did, yeah. the, did you have to just eat Chinese food? I mean, what uh, was what I was, was lucky. Yeah. I, I mean, I like Chinese food. But uh, there was a place called Jimmy's Kitchen. It was American restaurant there, very famous, called Jimmy's Kitchen. They had all American food, very mm -hmm. good food. And I eat Chinese food, but, but the, the thing I missed the most was being able to find me a cupcake <laughs> or some Twinkies. Yeah, there ain't no <laughs> cupcakes in Hong Kong. And, yeah. and, and you, know, I, you know, so I really started to get homesick. So it was okay because I was working, enjoying myself with, with Bruce and John making the movie, but man, I, did I get homesick. Now. You know, you did Melinda in America, and now you're doing Enter the Dragon in Hong Kong. Yes. What, what was, was it a different experience? I mean, because it's Warner Brothers, one is MGM, one mm -hmm. is Warner, so that's pretty high, high end. But how was the, how was the uh, filming different, at least for those first couple of weeks? Well, it's, here's the thing. Basically, they take their time. Yeah. You send a guy out, we one time they sent a guy out to go downtown or someplace to get uh, some, some article. Something very simple, you know. He came back four or five hours later. Yeah. You know, and it was no big deal to them, but yeah. that's what happens. They they just take their time. They're very slow about shooting, mm -hmm. and that's why I was there three months. Right. Where did they? Where did you stay? Where did they put you? I up? stayed the Hyatt Regency. The right Hyatt. On, right on right. Kowloon side. There you go. Very it, nice. It was it was very nice, but I was got very homesick. Now I got a lot <laughs> of. I did meet a very pretty airline stewardess there, from uh, TWA. There you and go. She was and she. What happened was. Uh, she used to bring me, she used to come back and forth, that was her thing, come, you know, her route. So uh, she used to bring me magazines and stuff, you know, from the States when she, yeah. when she, uh, w when she would come back over, she right. would bring me some magazines, latest magazines and stuff. So I've gotten a lot of stories from a lot of people of the first time they met Bruce Lee. Yeah. What was your experience? First time. First time you met Bruce Lee. Heard this guy say, Hey Jim, hey Jim. I turned around. I said, I looked around. I just, you know, I didn't. I never. I, you know, I didn't know Bruce. Yeah. Never met him. Yeah. So, and I didn't even see the series. Uh, what is that series called? Green Hornet. Green Hornet. Because yeah. I was playing sports or something or something involved with sports. And I, my friends used to always tell me about the Green Hornet, the Green Hornet, Cato, Cato. And I never got a chance to see it. First time I actually saw, uh, first time Bruce saw me though was when I fought on the uh, uh, four season Mike Stone's four season All Star team. Hmm. We uh, we had a we had an All Star team, and I was a captain of Mike Stone's All Star team, and we fought on the United States uh, Black Belt Team Competition Championships. And Bruce came there, and I heard every, you know the thing was, oh Bruce Lee's is in the audience. Bruce Lee's here. Bruce Lee's here. And I saw you know then I man kind of like I was up on the stage getting ready. And somebody said, hey, there's Bruce right there. I saw this guy, you know, like Bruce, you know, that's the way he walked like this. Yeah. You know, especially at a certain time, you know, he wants, he's like this. It was Bruce. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I saw Bruce. Uh, so um, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. They right. saw me fight. Right. Mike Stone, by the way, is a karate champion. He wound up for the film aspect. He was the original Enter the Ninja writer and star until he was kind of screwed over. It's all in the book. <laughs> but he's a great guy. You've got to read that book then if he's got and that. And his there. book. My book, his book. If you got that, he's got that about Mike Stone. You've got to read it. Mike's, 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 Mike's a great, great guy. Great yeah. guy. One of the, he's one of the guys I like the most in martial arts. I mean, Mike, I, he's one of my favorite people in martial arts. 
He's, he was a sweetheart. I have a picture in my book of him with Bruce and James Coburn and Chuck Norris all lined up with Mike Stone. He's just a great. And again, he did Enter the Ninja, but it's a long story we don't have to go into now. So the, well, the let first me say time, one thing. Let yeah, go. Funny thing about Mike. Mike Stone uh, at one point was dating Priscilla Presley. Oh. You didn't know that? No. I don't keep, I don't keep up with the social you, life. You guys know who Priscilla Presley is, right? Priscilla Presley, uh, the. Uh, Presley's ex wife. Yeah. So the widow. Mike gave a banquet. He invited me to this banquet, and uh, Priscilla was there, and uh, uh, the press, quite a bit of, quite a few people in the press was there, and Rona Barrett. You remember Rona? Oh Barrett? sure, Rona Barrett was a famous gossip columnist back in the day. Exactly. Yeah. She had a big show on, you know, on TV, and um, so they took pictures. They were taking photos and everything. So about. I don't know, a few days later, my girlfriend comes running in the house and she said, what is this, what is this? I said, well, what are you talking about? She said, well, I didn't know, you, you, you're dating Elvis Presley's old lady? <laughs> I said, no, I'm not dating Elvis Presley's old lady. So what they did, they had Mike and Elvis Presley and I, uh, Elvis Priscilla, Presley, Priscilla yeah. and I, we took a photo together. So what they did, they cut Mike out and said that Jim Kelly's dating Priscilla Presley. That's standard behavior, yeah. I couldn't believe it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, she, and Rona Bear had it on her show and everything. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mike, you know, you know, you, 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 you try to get me in big trouble here, you know? <laughs> Not only with my girlfriend, but I don't want, the, I don't want uh, Elvis Presley's uh, hit men come after me. Yeah, Nashville Mafia. Henchmen's yeah. coming after yeah. me, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> well, yeah. we'll leave Memphis that Mafia. We'll stop, I'll Memphis stop Mafia. there. We won't go any further yeah. than that. Well, let's get, anyway, that's what happened. Let's get the first time you, you spoke with Bruce Lee. First time I spoke with Bruce Lee was when he, he jumped out of his car. He was in the, his little Mercedes with uh, Raymond Chow. Raymond Chow's the head of Golden Harvest Studio, the co-producer of Enter the Dragon. Yeah, I was out at the studios. I had just arrived in Hong Kong. I said, let me drive the studio, see what's happening out there. So I got a taxi, got out there, got out. I was going up towards the set. And all of a sudden, somebody went back and went, hey, Jim, hey, Jim. And this is Bruce. Bruce was, I mean, just like incredible. He, like he knew me. You know, I never met him before. He was, hey, Jim, I'm so friendly and everything. That's when I first met him. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, we, be, we, were, we had a lot of things to talk about. Yeah. A lot of things to talk about. We shared a lot of different uh, things. Now, on the, on, so, you're, so you get, you get uh, homesick after mm -hmm. about two, three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. But you're still there for three more months or two and a half more months. That's right? right. That's right. So do you get to go back or you just have to live with your homesickness? I stayed there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a long flight. It is, at that that's time, yeah. I almost didn't get through the path. I, I almost didn't get into Hong Kong, yeah, because at the immigration, mm -hmm. when I arrived in Hong Kong, I had a big natural, you know, and then back then, that was the 70s, man, the black guy had the big natural, you know, so, <laughs> so uh, they pulled me right out of the line right. real quick, so they pulled me and took me in a room and started questioning me, and I said, hey, look, man, I'm only here to uh, uh, meet, meet up with Bruce Lee, we're going to do some stuff together. Mm -hmm. And they kept questioning about this and that. And I said, look, and also here, uh, uh, I got some people outside. Fred Weintraub's outside on the other side. Go talk to that guy. He'll come get everything straight. And they, so they kept questioning me. I said, look, man, just forget it. Just let, give me my ticket back. Let me go home. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, yeah. hey, man, hey, this, okay, yeah. just give my stuff back. I'm going. Get yeah. me a ticket. Let me go back to the States. But so happened they. We yeah. went out there and got Fred. Fred yeah. came in, and I don't know. He maybe gave him some money, or something. I don't know what he did. Oh, I'm sure he did. But we got out. Of there. <laughs> well, that introduced. I wanted to. I wanted to touch on that. I mean, I was going to wait till after Enter the Dragon, of course, but we might as well since we're in Hong Kong. Um, as as an African American mm -hmm. in Hong Kong of the mm -hmm. early 1970s, mm -hmm. uh, how would you compare the experience of how you were treated there to how we, you were treated in America uh, in early 1970s as an African American? Um, you know, I, I didn't really have a problem with uh, <coughs> with being African American in yeah, Hong Kong. Did anybody have a problem with you? Uh, no, not really. Uh, not really. Uh, the, the you know, it, it not, I didn't have a problem. I never had a real problem. No, I didn't. But you know, it's funny because you know, you walk down the streets, but you do track attention because they're not used to and only the service guys they see over the mainland. Right. So, but you know, you're walking down the street. And uh, the little kids, they'll go, Mommy, Mommy, looky, look, Mommy, looky, Mommy, looky, Mommy, looky. <laughs> they, 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 they were all like. They're know. always amazed by hair. Hey, yeah, I yeah, that. yeah. They were amazed by hair. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I, you know, I didn't even think about it. Uh, another actor in, this, in the set 
was saying that uh, he was saying that you know when you go places, it's funny how people look at you. But I never had a problem. Yeah. A lot of people thought I was Clarence Williams. Oh. <laughs> they say yeah, Mod Squad. Clarence Williams, Mod yeah. Squad. They that was say, big on television at the time. And uh, we, I go to a club, and the girls in the club or the guys in the club said, "Come." They, my squad, my squad, my squad. My squad. I said, no, I'm not my squad, but he's, I'm a big fan of Clarence Williams. Yeah. I, I am. I'll probably talk about it later, but I'm a huge fan. I was a huge fan. He was probably my first, he was probably my uh, inspiration also, yeah. uh, Clarence Williams. Of all the actors out there at that time, before I got in the movie business, of all the actors, he was more inspiring to me than any other actor yeah, Clarence Williams the third, still still working, still mm -hmm. doing great work. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look him up. He's he really does terrific stuff. So, Enter the Dragon. You're working with Shi Qian, Shi Qian, who plays the villain now. I'm sure he didn't know any English, right? No, I don't know how we even did our dialogue. <laughs> I, people ask me, I said, I don't know, man. He did it. He's a nice guy. He's he extremely was a nice guy. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. She can uh, the, uh, the history of, uh, of kung fu films. The, the integral character in, in kung fu films is Wang Fei Hong, played by Jackie Chan in Drunken Master, Jet Li in Once Upon a Time in China. But it was originally played by a guy named Quan Ta King, and his the villain in like eighty nine Wang Fei Hong movies were often played by Shi Qian, which is the reason they chose him to play Mr. Han in Enter the Dragon, because he was legendary and iconic as the villain in uh, kung fu films. But I don't know if you knew any of that, right? Not when I was there, not the time I learned about it later. <laughs> yeah, did you wonder why they had this old man no, I, playing the I, part? I just knew he was, I, I knew he had been famous or used yeah. to be a very famous actor or martial arts. I knew it was something like that, but yeah. I didn't know his history. So on the set, did he speak Chinese when he was doing his lines with you and you spoke English? How did that work? Good question. A good question. <laughs> that was so long ago. When you get 100 years old, man, your memory goes, you know? Oh, yeah, well. She can when you when yeah. I get hundred years old. Because I remember your most but powerful sequences was with She Can. He definitely didn't speak English. Right. You know, so I guess you know, I, I, I they fed me the lines or whatever, mm -hmm. and I just did my thing. Right. Yeah. But he didn't speak English. You were always kind of experienced now. You also had John Saxon, Bruce. Yeah. yeah. Was there anybody else that you remembered specifically? That there were some scenes that were your favorites, or some scenes that were more difficult than others because of whatever. Hmm. Uh, no, I. No, I uh, enjoyed working with John Saxon. Yeah. John Saxon, great actor. I was very fortunate to have, in my opinion, the greatest martial artist ever lived. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Lee. I'll talk to you about that later. Probably, probably have questions for me on that. But in my opinion, I'll tell you right now. Uh, I've been. I fought the best. I trained with the best. I. Kn I know great mar. I know great martial artists. And there's, there's never been anybody, in my opinion, like Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was unbelievable, mm -hmm. absolutely unbelievable, guys. You, you, you don't know how great this guy was. People don't really know. Well, I think they do, actually, because he, he's still the icon. Mm -hmm. I mean, as Fred Weintraub said, when you say Western, some people may think of John Wayne, some people yeah. may think of Clint Eastwood. Yeah. But when you say martial arts, that's right. Bruce and, Lee's and, the first name. That's right. And I, you know, I'm not just talking about... Uh, uh, actor, or right. I'm talking about martial artist, right. guy who knew his stuff. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, this guy was. I, I, I don't. Even, I, there's stories I know about Bruce Lee that I don't even share, <laughs> because I have more. I have respect for the people, other people in martial arts, and I, it's not necessary for me to name names. I know. I know who Bruce Lee sparred with. Yeah. I know. They won't tell you. But I know people he sparred with. I never mentioned their names either. But Bruce Lee was untouchable. Yeah. Is it in the book? Is it in your book? No. Nope. Oh, come on, I, man. I don't men I mention this, but I never tell the names. Can I get everybody to swear <laughs> to secrecy? Can you say yeah. one name? No. Nope. Nope. Can you mix them up? Can you have a jumble of a name? No, I, have too much I, I have too much respect. Can I guess? <laughs> no, you probably could guess. Yeah, I probably could. Because <laughs> sure I know a lot of people he sparred with I wouldn't well. confirm it. Yeah. There you go. That's fair enough. But I, I, bet, you know, I, I, I just have too much respect for other guys. Yeah. Like martial arts. Well, and, yeah, go ahead. But, but, you know, he, he was uh, the speed, the timing. The technique, unbelievable. Yep. Bruce was the type of guy that he would spar with you. He could spar the guy. I might say hey, whoever, John Doe. John Doe the great, <laughs> great champion. Okay, John Doe. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what size. 
You can be a lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, didn't matter, Bruce. Bruce mm -hmm. was light, lightweight. Mm -hmm. What was Bruce? 155? If he, well, wet. Like 1, soaking wet. 145. Yeah. Soaking wet, yeah. Like one, maybe. Yeah. 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 And what high tall? 5'7, five, maybe? 5'7, five, no more. Uh, he could spar with anybody, yeah. any size. Didn't matter what size you yeah. were. And he would spar with you and hands and feet. And then he'd say, okay, let's just go hands. Just hands. Mm -hmm. Guy was incredible. That's I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, that's Kung Fu. <laughs> I mean, again, it's the difference. It's, uh, you know, karate, uh, I think of as a discipline. Kung Fu is an art. And it's also water versus ice. I mean, Bruce's favorite uh, famous line, be water, my friend. Uh, mm -hmm. That's And also, he personalized it, which is yep. what you're supposed to do with Kung Fu. In other words, if we were both martial artists, he would be doing Jim Fu, I would be doing Rick Fu because I'm older, heavier, bearded, et cetera, you change it. And Bruce made it his own. Jeet yeah. Kune Do was born and died with Bruce Lee because mm -hmm. that was Bruce's foo. Also, <laughs> right. I mean, as you pointed out, uh, Bruce was incredible from your standpoint as well as my standpoint mm -hmm. because not only was Bruce a great martial artist, but he was a great actor and a great filmmaker. Yeah. And that's why his stuff remains the iconic ones over the test of time because he was the triple threat. Mm -hmm. That's why no one has matched him ever since. That's right. Be and even, even Jackie Chan designed himself as the anti-Bruce Lee. Because mm -hmm. uh, Jackie Chan's first major uh, breakthrough role was to play in a sequel to Fist of Fury, to play the part that Bruce Lee played. And he found it so uncomfortable because no one could be Bruce right. that he went home and said, I'm going to do the exact opposite of what Bruce did so I can be my own person. Well, he was smart. He yeah. was smart. Yeah. But did you know, I didn't even know when I was making Into the Dragon that Jackie Chan was in the movie. Yeah, he gets his neck broken. I, I didn't even know. He, was, he played one of the stunt guys, right? Yeah, he's very famous. There's that fa famous scene under, uh, in the underground fight where a guy comes up and Bruce gets him in the lock and then breaks his neck. Mm -hmm. That's Jackie oh, that's Chan. that's Jackie Chan? That's Jackie Chan. I didn't know. Because he was in the previous film as well. He yeah. played, he uh, did stunt work for the uh, Japanese guy. Mm -hmm. But in any case, so let's go on with, you know, three months. Interesting, Robert Klaus, the director, mm -hmm. did a wonderful fight movie, not a great movie, but a wonderful fight movie called Darker Than Amber that got him the job on Enter the Dragon. But, you know, I'm willing to name names. He's okay. never done a film nearly as good as Enter the Dragon. Mm -hmm. So did you notice how much Bruce worked behind the camera as well as in front of the camera? Uh, no, I didn't notice that that, no? much, that much. No, yeah. no, I didn't. I didn't do that. Um, so Robert Klaus was the force on the set, or was Fred Weintraub working with him? I mean, how did... Uh, I'm sure that Bruce and Robert, I mean, uh, Bob Klaus mm -hmm. uh, worked together, but I didn't see that much of it. Yeah. You know, I didn't really, I really didn't. I, um, most, I saw Bob Klaus working, doing, doing his director, directing the film. Yeah. And maybe Bruce helped him a little bit, but I know Bruce definitely did the fight scene. Right, right. He, now, I saw Bruce doing that. Right. But Bruce was basically, he, when I was doing my fight scenes, he just came up and said, Here's you. what he would do, he would lay something, if, you know, especially if he respects you and your art, he would just lay it out and say, hey, Jim, this is, this is what I laid out. Change it any way you want. Hmm. Make it work for you. If it doesn't work for you, this technique doesn't work for you, change it any way you want and do whatever you want to do. But, I, you know, they want me to lay, lay the fight scenes out, and I'll do that. But, you know, with you, you just do what you want to do. But you take out what you want to add what you want, whatever, or use all of it. I don't care. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, he had an understanding of karate. He had an understanding of all the martial yeah, arts. Because yeah, yeah. it all comes from the you know, great masters have always said, learn mother yeah. nature, human nature, your own nature, you'll know kung fu. Right. And so, I mean, did he influence you at all in terms of learning more in the, of the Chinese boxing as opposed to the Japanese uh, um, karate? Well, when I first went to Los Angeles, I went down to R.K. Wong school. Ah, there you go. Mm -hmm. I studied Kung Fu down there at R.K. Wong because I, I was looking for Bruce. Right. Because I, uh, <clears throat> I was uh, talking to this particular heavyweight champion uh, at the time, and I was going we were going to train together, but he was, got, he was involved with some other stuff. So he said, there's only two guys. And basically what he said, he, he said, well, he, this is what he said. He said, Jim, look, you know, I'm busy right now, and I, can't, I don't have time to do a lot of training, but there's only two guys in L.A. to train with. I said, yeah, who's that? He said, the only two guys you want to go train with, because at the time I was a black belt already. Yeah. I had just moved to Los Angeles, but I, was a, I, I had my black belt, and I was preparing to fight in, in tournaments, black belt tournaments there. 
He said, go to Bruce Lee or Gordon Dover Sola, Okinawa Tepe. And I said, okay. So I, first I went to look for Bruce Lee. He said, he's down in Chinatown, but I, I, I don't know the address, man, but here's the way you can <laughs> find the places. Go here, go there, you'll find him down there. So I, I went looking for Bruce Lee, and um, I couldn't find him. So I, uh, I was walking around down Chinatown there, and, and um, there was a Kung Fu school. And I said, well, I hate going to ask those guys where Bruce Lee's school is, but yeah. I guess I will. Yeah. So I went in, so I went, and it was R.K. Wong's school. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, I uh, hate to ask you this, but can you tell me where Bruce Lee's school is? And he said, well, Bruce is gone. Yeah. Bruce has gone to Hong Kong. He right. left. He closed his school down. He's gone. So I, tra I trained a while with R.K. Wong there down with, in the Kung Fu school down there. And quite a while, actually. And then I went to uh, Okinawa Tei with Garden Dover Solo, the, the other guy that, the, uh, that uh, this particular person told me to train with. So, uh, yeah. I don't, mm. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, that, indeed, indeed. I mean, um, how many people have seen Enter the Dragon? There you go. You've all seen Enter the Dragon. Now, I thought you were great. I mean, uh, like I said in the preview for the Films of Fury, the Kung Fu movie movie, one of the, the first things that happens is you saying, you come, man, you came right out of a comic book. Mm -hmm. What a great delivery. How did you feel about your performance in Enter the Dragon? You know, I uh, considered I never had any acting training uh, until uh, what I did. You know what I did? I, I found this incredible actor instructor at Lee Strasberg hmm. Institute, incredible guy. So I enrolled in his class, uh, and uh, actually I enrolled in that class right before End of the Dragon, just a little bit before. And uh, so I, I got this part, and I told him I had a part to do in this movie. And he said, okay, why don't you take some private lessons with me? So I took some private lessons with him, and he prepared me for that. He was this incredible guy. And um, I wonder if you guys know out there, uh, he had me uh, playing a, what character in Enter the Dragon would you, in real life, if you had to pick a real life athlete, uh, what character would you relate Williams to somewhat? Maybe think of uh, maybe a football player, basketball player, boxer, hmm. athlete. What character do you think Williams might, emulate a little, might have emulated a little bit? Hmm. Huh? Uh huh. Which who is it? Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. There you go. See, he he had me. He had he he took me there. Did you all hear that, Muhammad Ali? Right. I'll be too busy looking good. <laughs> <clears throat> and it's funny because I had these lines, and I and people said, "Do you write those lines?" I said, "No, no. The writer wrote all yeah. those lines. Yeah. He wrote all those lines. So yeah, we used a little bit of Muhammad Ali." And um, we used a little, I used, I mixed in a little, like I said earlier, Clarence Williams. So, uh, yeah, he prepared me for that part. And um, I, yeah, I, I, I like, I like, for the second movie, I was okay. Yeah, well, there you go. We'll talk about that in a second. I didn't really get a chance to really do my thing overall with, for a spicy concern because it really wasn't my movie. It's Bruce's movie. Right. So, John, you know, we just do our thing, gone. Bruce, uh, they take all day. Yeah. Camera here, camera there. Here, 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 but it's his movie. You know, yeah, I, I understood it. Yeah, that was my question. I mean, were you? Would you have changed your character's arc? I mean, your death. I felt your death was too easy, considering how good you were up up until then. But it was Bruce's movie. Yeah, I, actually, I, I think reality was that uh, they told me that uh, I've heard from other people that I wasn't supposed to get killed in that movie. Really? Originally. Yeah. But uh, John Saxon, I, you know, I love him. He's a good friend of mine. But, but what happened was, John says it's not true. It's Fred Weintraub's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Weintraub's the director. But no, I, producer. I, I, producer. I, producer. Yeah. I was told that uh, John was originally the one to get killed. Oh. But what happened was, there we go. which makes sense, John's agent said, look, if you want John in this movie, Jim Kelly's got to die. Oh. Unfortunately, that's standard operating racism in Hollywood. It's true. Who's the first guy who dies in all the horror movies? Well, that is true, too. But, yeah. But the reason yeah. they said that, that, <laughs> that is true. That's true, too. Yeah. But the reason they said that is because John had, he was a star at that time. He was known yeah, he was. all over the world. Yeah. My, you know, I had only two movies. And John had, I don't know how many, maybe four, 30 movies at that time or 40, I don't know. But he was known. He was internationally known. True. So his name was more important in that movie than my name. And I understood it. Yeah. So uh, I had no problem with it, but that's what I was told by several people that yeah. 
Wow. And uh, John said, oh, no, no, Jim. That's Fred Weimchai's <laughs> bull, bull, bullshit. But it worked out for me because I don't know if you guys know, after I shot the film, and then once I got, well, I was on the set. We were not on the set, but driving to location in Hong Kong. And myself, uh, Anna Capri, and um, Anna Capri and Fred Weintraub, we were in the cab <clears throat> in a car going to the set. And Fred said, Jim, how do you like the movie business? I said, uh, um, I like it. I like it. I like it. But I sure would be glad I get back home. You know? He said, well, don't worry, Jim. In a year, two years from now, you will have traveled all over the world. You will have traveled all over the world. I didn't pay attention. I didn't want to hear about traveling all over the world. I just yeah. want to get back to Go home. Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. So, and the reason I'm telling you this is because after I got back to Los Angeles, about, oh, I don't know, a few weeks later, my agent called me again and said, hey, Jim, uh, I just got a call from Ted Ashley, head of Warner Brothers, and, and Fred Weintraub. They want to talk to you. They, they want to offer you a three-picture deal to star in three films for them. So they offered me a three-picture deal to star in three films for them plus an option on a TV series. Right. So uh, it worked out. Yeah, it worked out fine. I mean, th those three movies, Black Belt Jones, right? Black Belt Jones. Was Hot Potato Hot one Hot Potato. Of those? And what was the second? Golden Needles. Golden Needles. With oh, Joe with Don, Joe Don ba Baker. Joe Don Baker, yeah. Elizabeth Ashley, yeah. and, uh, and Burgess Meredith. Right. Were you, were you happy with that stuff? Would you have preferred it to be more? I mean, I was unhappy with Golden Needles and Hot Potato because I thought you should have been the star. I thought Black Belt Jones, yeah. and well, I attributed it to standard operating racism. Well, I was the star of Hot Potato. Yes, yeah, but, but, you, but they had a whole bunch of team guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Golden Needles, uh, Joe Don Baker and Elizabeth Ash. Uh, you know, basically what happened was that my agent made me such a bad deal that, oh, I had, that my attorney got on her, on her case real bad, and mm -hmm. we just we just tried to get the options over with yeah, and get yeah. out of it. And then so you kept working. I remember, you know, the tattoo connection was the one that I found most interesting because that was made in Hong Kong that's, again. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, my, mine too. Yeah. And it was, uh, it's, a big, it's a kung fu movie with Chen Sing and Tan Tao Yang, or mm -hmm. Dilan Tam as he's also known, and a completely different style of choreography of what you had been doing yeah. in the American stuff. Yeah, you were yeah. doing kung fu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was that like? Do you remember well, the choreographer? Oh, yeah. I don't remember his name, but okay. uh, yeah, he was a nice guy. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we really... We, it was, uh, that's my favorite. Black Bell Jones and Tattoo, Tattoo Connection are my two favorite fight films. Yeah, those were great. Uh, I really enjoyed all the techniques they had, and it was really nice. Uh, got a little crazy on the set one, couple, one time, but we won't, we won't get it. Right. Yeah, we will. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on, you can't just say that and go. Well, Things you know, got, a little, got a little hairy, well, did they? We, well, we had one guy. I've never, we never had a problem before. I mean, all the Asian guys, the, the Asian guys, um, stunt guys, always work the best, they're very good, they're very good. But this one actor who is a very good martial artist, mm -hmm. um, good kicks and everything, um, he started to complain, you know, and um, he, got, he got very upset hmm. when, in our fights. Yeah, yeah. So, I know who it is. And, it's, and, the, and the guy said, um, I said, what's wrong? I asked the director, what's, what's the problem here? And I, he said that uh, you block too hard. I said, I block too hard? I said, what does he mean I block? He said, not only do you block too hard, you punch too hard. I said, I'm not punching them at I'm controlling my punches. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and depth, you know, we punched, we, in American, American stunt guys, and even the Asian stunt guys, same, but this one guy, he was a problem. Yeah. Because he didn't want to be touched. Yeah. Even to the body, he didn't want to be touched. If this is the body, he didn't want, he want me to pull. You don't have to do it. Anyway, um, with guys I know, stunt guys I know, if you're in a fight scene, you guys in martial arts, and you're, do, you're trying to sell a fight, you don't want to be touched. So you can sell it. You, you know, you don't have to guess when they're punching. You want to be touched. That makes you react better. Right. You know, but yeah. this guy said he didn't want to be touched like that. Yeah. He didn't want to be, he said, and Jim's blocking too hard. My, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. You want to really see hard blocks? I show you hard blocks. <laughs> Those are not hard blocks. Yeah, absolutely. He, the point was he didn't want to be touched. Yeah. You know, it was just unusual. Yeah. And it almost really came to blows. Oh, wow. It came very close. Then he would have been touched. So then, yeah. so then the, the, he tried to, he, I, I, had a, knew, I knew that I had to watch him from that point on. Yeah. Because I knew he was going to try to take me out. Uh, accident, and they go say, oh, it was an accident. Yeah, right. See, hey, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was not some actor yeah. who just so happened doing karate. Yeah. I was an international champion. Mm -hmm. So I've been in the ring. Yeah. So I knew, you know, I, I was ready for it. Yeah. There have been some actors, just, they just show him a little karate. He might have been hurt that day. Yeah. And you look, look at Tattoo Connection. You watch when those spinning heel kicks he threw. Oh, yeah. 
But I came back on him. He thought he had me, but I slid back on him, and he, just, and he missed. Yeah. But if it had been a normal actor, he would have knocked him out. Would have knocked him out. You can tell, I mean, the, the, the fights with Chen Singh are better. Yeah. You can tell. I mean, <laughs> and I love, your, I love your sideways moves because it reminded me a lot of Bolo. Yeah, Bolo yeah. Young. Did you get to meet him on Bolo's Bolo's a great the guy, great guy. Bolo does a very, uh, very esoteric form of Tai Chi, which is all fighting to the side. And you, when you were dealing with Chen Singh, you were doing some beautiful stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. I yeah, like that, I like that, that fight. Nice. I like those. Bolo's a great guy. I really enjoy working with Bolo in the Chen Singh. Yeah. yeah. He's a nice, yeah, very good, very, very Chen Singh has a nice bridge between Japanese and Chinese. Mm -hmm. You know, he knows both styles. He yeah. can do both styles. Yeah. And he's so versatile. He does hundreds of films. And speaking of that, so you finish these, you do a bunch of films, then you, you basically, as far as we can tell, correct me if I'm wrong, s sort of stop working in films in 1982 or so. About 82, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't really go out, uh, get out of the business. What I did, the scripts were becoming, they, they were just, I was getting bad scripts. Yeah. So I said, that's it. No more, you know. If I wanted to just make a million dollars, two million dollars, you know, most actors, you pick, hey, you're going to give them two million. You gonna, now today, you give them 25 million. Hey, I don't, I don't need to see the script. Yeah. Give, me, give me the money. By the way, it's back to two again. <laughs> back it's to back two. to two. So After two. Jim Carrey, it's gone back to just two. Get, just, yeah. I, hey, I don't need to read the script. Give me the money. I mean, that's okay. That's their thing. That's not my thing. I didn't get in the business for that. Yeah. So I, you know, the script started getting bad, and I said, no, I'm not going to have my fans go pay their money to see this stuff. No way. So I stopped. Well, wow. You know, I said, if something good comes along, I'll, I'll, I will do it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but uh, nothing good was coming along, so I just kind of like just did other things. Cool. I mean, I read that you, you know, you're a tennis instructor still. Mm -hmm. I pl started playing a lot of tennis. Yeah. Uh, playing tournaments. Yeah. And uh, won some tournaments. Uh, and yeah, and I own a, and I actually own a uh, tennis club. Oh wow. Yeah. Where? Coronado. Coronado. San Diego. There's the man. Yep. All right. Well, we've come to the uh, question section. Uh oh. So, do we? Anybody I have any questions? I all your questions already. No, you got to tell the, tell them the names of the guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. You <laughs> do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Anything you want. Don't be shy now. Don't be shy because yeah. what happens these shows, you know, yeah. what happens, I, I, you, uh, you guys are in here and then, not you guys, but people come to the <laughs> question and ask and then they come to my table later. They right. Say, then they ask me the question. I said, well, why do you ask me that question when you're in this question? And That's all right. They're That's shy. All right. That's what and means. by the way, you can attack me and I hope Jim will save me. So <laughs> you can do that too. I don't you think want. you need me to save you. Come, I think you Jeff, can take care of yourself. I probably, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, yes, what's your question? Oh, there we go. Uh, you can tell you did movies in the 70s, mm -hmm. and uh, you did martial arts starting uh, out uh, back then. What's your view on uh, what martial arts is doing now, and as far as MMA oh, and where the movies are going? Oh, there you go. I knew that was coming <laughs> up. Good man. You always get that question. Good question. Yeah. MMA <clears throat> and traditional martial arts, and back then even. So you got MMA, you got traditional martial arts today, and you got compared to back in the day, too. So uh, it's two different things. It's two different ball games, you know. I know a lot of uh, karate instructors that my friends, the gym, MMA is, MMA is killing me, man. They're killing my schools. That's true. I said, what do you mean they're killing your schools? I, they said, well, kids come, the kids come to my school, teenagers or, yeah, teenagers, whatever, guys come to school, say, they want to know one thing. They say, sensei. How soon can you teach me how to choke somebody out? How quick can you teach me how to break somebody's arm? That's all they want to do. They want to come in and learn how to break somebody's arm real quick, how to choke somebody out, put a rear naked choke on them. Yep. So, you know, that's all they want to know. They don't care about this, the spiritual part of it. Or they the only philosophy. want to know that one aggressive thing. Yep. So they said that's, that's killing them. I, you know, it's two different worlds, you know. Um, I, do I watch MMA? Yes, I do. I, well, I train. I don't know. I, I didn't get into it. But I, I started training with Hoist Gracie in 1992. Hoist Gracie was, was the first UFC champion. Um, and I was trained with him before he got into UFC. I used to train with Hoist, and, uh, Hoist Gracie, his brother Hickson Gracie, Hoyler Gracie. When they were teaching uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu out of their garage, they taught for many years out of their garages. They had about three different garages. That each family had a garage. And each uh, brother had a garage. So we used to train their garage. And then in, right before UFC, uh, they opened up Academy. So uh, yeah, I was training with them. So um, I really like watching it. I mean, 
you know. It I, is what it is. It is what it is. That's a good way to put it. It is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, do I like traditional martial arts? Yes, I do. Because I, I really like traditional martial arts. Um, but MMA is fine, you know. I hope they pay those guys some good money because, man, they're taking a pounding. I don't care what Dana White says. Dana White tell you, oh, man, the boxing is much more brutal. Maybe it is. I don't know. No. But the thing, and I don't think so. You, no, of course I not. I don't think so. But, but the thing is, he said, oh, these guys. man, look at the blood in that ring, those rings. You guys watch that sometime? Man. It's those, fun to watch. I those, don't recommend you do it. Those guys getting kicked, getting elbowed in the head, elbowed and kicked in the knees. I mean, that's going to take a big toll later on in life. Yep. I mean, the, the hope, so I hope they're getting paid a lot of money to do that. To do that. Relatively, but there's a certain personality. In Zhang Hu, which is the, the phrase for the martial art world, we have a joke. Do you know what mixed martial arts is mixed with? Crap. Anyway, that's the joke. But be that as I mean, we can talk about that later. I have very, and again in the book, and I have very specific uh, feelings on mixed martial arts. Uh, they should call it mixed martial something, but it's not arts. But be that as it may. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I train uh, with a gi and without a gi. I mean, we, 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 we know without the gi top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't train with a gi. No, you mean, you mean, I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah. No, we train, we would train. I'll tell you how we, when I work, work out with the hoist and work out with Hicks, in the very beginning, you, you know, you, hoist is a very technical instructor, uh, very technical. And Hicks, I mean, Hickson's a little bit different, his brother. But when we first started out, they have, you know, you, do your, you have your gi, and then once you get pretty good, once you get pretty good at it, then you can go with, without the gi top. Without the gi top. I found the gi is a sign of respect and a sign of discipline. Uh, and once you've gotten to a certain level, I mean, I'm not, Americans like, I find, like to be uh, belt-based, because it shows where they're going to. But of course, there's never been belts or gis in uh, Kung Fu. They've added to it because students have wanted it, but it's not natural to them. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do you see anybody now who does uh, movies and martial arts that are up and, up and rising? Uh, good question. Yeah. Um, man, it takes too long to think about this one. <laughs> well, I'll cover for a while. You think about it. No, no, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's cool. Uh, right now, uh, no, I, I'm... I like, you know, I, I even, I go back, uh, I, people say, well, Jim, you like, what do you like? Like you said, I, I like, you know, believe it or not, you can believe it or not, I don't know, but <laughs> I like, I like, I like Steven Seagal movies. You He's know? not a great guy, but he makes some you good know, films. I like his movies, yeah. uh, you know, um, but um, no, today, uh, I don't know. Who's out there? I don't, I don't oh, know. there's a lot of people, I'll tell you. We're waiting for RZA now with Man with the Iron Fist. We're hoping for the best with that. Keanu Reeves, who did Matrix, of course, which was very important to show that white people could do Kung Fu too, is doing a Tai Chi movie, and we're hoping for the best for that. Of course, I'm a big fan and friends with Jet Li and Jackie Chan, and you know, Jackie is doing his big blowout final big Kung Fu movie for this December. Jet has kind of like gone out of that. Donnie Yen is, is working hard now. And, uh, and of course, my, I was Kung Fu consultant on it. My favorite guy of all time is Poe the Panda <laughs> from Kung Fu Panda. He's my favorite guy. You know, also, uh, also you mentioned Jackie Chan. Yeah. I, don't, you, you, I know you guys don't know, but I, almost, I personally almost did the movie uh, Ooh, I wish Rush did. Hour 3. Oh. I, I was that close. Oh, what a shame. And something happened. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I tell you, I went in, I met with, what's the director's name? Um, Oh, sh oh, yes. Oh, I, I put I his name out of, of my name. mind bec because Ratner. Brett Ratner, yeah, thank Brett you. Yeah. yeah, so I went in. He's a huge fan of mine, actually. Oh, cool. Big, big fan. So I went in and met with him, with him his director, uh, I mean, uh, all, his, all his people, main people, yeah. producers, all of them. And they were all set. Okay, Jim, you're, you're in. We know you won't do any type of part, so we're going to make this just right for you. We're going to bring you in with Jackie and uh, Chris, Chris Rock, Tucker. Chris Tucker. And we're going to make it right for you, because we know we have to do that. And, but you're in. And I thought I was in. I Sounds was like it, doesn't I, it? I was ready to go to Paris. Oh. That's, you know, I was oh. really ready to go to Paris. So uh, I was getting prepared, start training, getting ready. And 
never heard from him again. <sighs> I don't know what happened. And again, I don't. Like I think make, I do. I don't like to make judgments. I'll let Go you ahead. make judgments. I'll make judgments. But I, I don't. I, I. I don't know. I don't want to blame anybody. I don't know. I will. You will. Oh, I know. I know what happened. Oh, you tell me. Chris Tucker. Man, everybody says that. Because Man, is. you come right out of a comic book. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> no. There, we but, have a lot of stories on the want, set of those I'm, booties. You know, you could be exactly right. I didn't say it. He said it. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. I'll, I'll name names. That's interesting, you know, because so many people have told me that. I refuse to make, the, make any, I, I thought about that. It fits his behavior, unfortunately. You know, he, has an, he has a history of behavior. And it may not have been, who knows? It may not have been, but, but good more chance. than, yeah, good the chance. odds are good. My girlfriend says the same thing. Yeah, it's, she's right. And she I, says, Chris Tucker. I, I like, said, no, yeah. you don't know that. She said, yeah, it's We Chris don't Tucker. know that, but I do know things that, well, anyway. But you know, let me say one more thing. <clears throat> yes. And why, you say, well, how does Chris Tucker have so much power? Oh, my how, God. How can he get Jim, keep Jim from being in the movie? You might be thinking that. I'll tell you why. They paid him like $25 million for that picture. Yep. When you pay somebody $25 million, you got a lot of say-so. you got to keep him happy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because without $25 him, that's million. Movie. And this is For three. one movie. Yeah. Just one, that last movie. And you notice, Jackie makes like six movies in between each rush hour he does. Chris Tucker makes none. That's right. He cannot get paid. It, no, it's not. Even. And also, between you and me, yeah. don't listen. Nobody wants to work with him. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. He behaves a certain way. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't, you didn't hear me. Mixed martial arts. Uh, there we go. Any other questions, guys? No? No more. You sure not? You come over to my table later. Come over to the table. And you'll though. say, at, come over I said, to the well, table. Why didn't you ask me that when I was up on stage? Why you should, you, you don't have more questions? Them there? Huh? No. I'll tell you who Bruce Lee is. Okay, this I'm, I'm, I know. I'm gonna be. Yeah, boy, he's good. Be he's a good state. man. I'm being. Boy I'm state. not a good man. That's I'm gonna stay in void state. Simple. You tell me. Yeah, you tell. I'm, me. I'm not gonna tell him now. They'll come over. To, my table is diagonal from Jim's. Come see Jim at his table. <laughs> come see me at mine. Movies, books, all the rest of it. Any other questions? Autographs, interviews. Are you available? Do we have time for pictures now, or we're time? Yeah, we're in time. We're okay. Time. okay, we're done with time. Come, follow us out to the hall. Autographs, whatever you need. Whatever you need. Okay. All right? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Jim Kelly. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. The, the icon, the legend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.